Are you ready to scale and outsource your business? Okay, let's go. Welcome to the Outsourcing and Scaling Show. I'm your host, Nathan Hirsch, a show where we talk about everything Amazon, Shopify, e-commerce, and digital marketing. Let's get started. Welcome back to Outsourcing and Scaling. I'm here with a very special guest, Manuel Suarez. How are you doing today? Oh, fantastic. Uh, Very glad to be here, Nathan. Thank you for bringing me in. No problem. So we originally connected through Ben Cummings, who's a big referral partner for FreeUp. Um, for those of you that don't know, Manuel started a business launching his own brand. And within a year, this was a few years ago, it was a multi-million dollar company and he sold it a few months later. Then he helped his father take his own company from $2 million in revenue to $40 million in revenue in just 40 years. $40 million. After this, he started taking on clients. He took his first client from eight hundred k a month sales to over $3 million in six months and has helped generate over half a billion views across different channels and millions of followers. Since then, he started his own agency, Attention Grabbing Media, inspired by Ben Cummings, and now created his own course on Facebook marketing. Very impressive. You're one of the leaders in the digital marketing space, and we're excited to have you. And we're going to talk about all of that. But first, I want to take a gigantic step back and talk about growing up. Were you a straight A student? Were you a rebel? Did you graduate college? Walk us through that a little bit. Uh, It's funny that you asked that, Nathan, because uh, in my case, uh, I grew up thinking that I was going to be a failure in my whole life. I grew up thinking that there was no hope for me. Uh, Why did I think like that? I already know why. Uh, I thought about this for a long time. Why did I consider myself that... I was meant to not succeed in life. The main thing about that was that uh, the system, including my own mom, made me feel that um, I was not going to make it because I was not into school. I was not into going through an education. I was not interested in learning about details of how many presidents we've had and who was the 41st one and uh, how many galaxies exist. I mean, none of that stuff was something that was that I was passionate about. So I had all these students. Um, I guess that internally I felt that I had some intelligence, some IQ, but I didn't believe in any of my abilities just because I, you were measured by how successful you are in class. That's basically what determined your success. You were measured by your um, uh, university that you were selected for. Or, so for me, that was a, it was a big deal because um, I, I, I did go in a different direction, Nathan. I mean, I did go into drugs and girls and things that were very destructive along the way. Um, in combination with me being in school, like I'm so bored with this whole thing. Let me go and have some fun. And then looking at all my friends, straight A's, and they they were doing great in school and they were uh, actually uh, flourishing. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess they're going to make money. They're going to be the ones with the BMWs and the big houses. And I'll just somehow survive. Maybe one day my dad will make enough money that I inherit something. And that's kind of like the viewpoint that I had. As I was growing up, Nathan, um, I didn't know that I was going to be successful until not that long ago. <laughs> That's the reality. So uh, my story is actually quite, uh, quite long. We don't have time for that uh, today. Uh, but I built myself up from, uh, from a bankruptcy uh, after the economic collapse in 2007 in the United States. And without a degree, without a certificate on the wall, without none of that. And it's a story of uh, survival and a story of uh, basically uh, understanding um, that we had a different world. And, uh, and by us doing that, uh, I was able to actually obsess about different opportunities and understand them. Um, some of you guys uh, that are watching this or listening to this might have seen my content in social media or uh, the Facebook advertising uh, ninja, etc. But it's because I obsessed about it and I started learning about it and I became a good student. Believe it or not, it was crazy, right? Because I'm not supposed to be a good student. I became a really, really damn good student. Nobody else out there was studying more than me in this, uh, this subject, that's for sure. <laughs> so, so let's talk about being a good student and studying. I mean, you, you started from scratch. Let's say you didn't know anything about marketing, anything about Facebook ads. How did you even begin? Was it some trial and error? Were you watching lots of videos, taking notes? What did that process look like? Great question, Evan. I was actually hungry. I was hungry. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if uh, uh, a lot of you guys can relate to this probably, right? Uh, in my case, 
having a nine to five uh, and then suddenly being fired and then suddenly uh, getting another job and then being cut. My salary was cut in half just because the economy was not doing well. Um, looking at my environment, I said, wait a second, it's no longer about me. Uh, I had now uh, three children. Um, I had a baby, a two-year-old and a four-year-old, and I knew I had to do something about it. Uh, I was not doing well in life. Uh, my wife and I, we could not take a vacation. If my mom got sick, I couldn't help her. And for me, it was all about uh, necessity. Hey, I have a necessity. What can I do with my life? And it all started with an observation. So I have the necessity and I look around and I said, I got to do something, right? I'm here. I have a cell phone. I'm paying the bill, which is about $60 a month at that point. Uh, painful, $60 a month. Um, right. But I got to pay it. And I, I suddenly realized, I remember being in bed, uh, getting one of my kids to go to sleep. And then I was playing, I don't know if you guys remember this game. Uh, it's a game that got really popular, Temple Run. It was Temple yeah. Run. And I was playing that game and I suddenly realized for some reason, I don't know why, there's, there's these crucial moments in life in which you have an epitome or something changes in your universe. Who knows why that happens, right? It could be, some people might call it an illumination from God. Some people might call it, I don't know, you, you see your future, whatever it is. But at that moment, I said, why am I wasting my time with this when I cannot even go on a trip uh, for the weekend or I cannot go to the movies feeling comfortable about spending $20? Why am I doing this? So for me, that was uh, that how things started to turn around, Nathan. And this was about... I'm going to say that this was about 2012. Uh, a little bit earlier than that, I already had a few attempts uh, at finding something that I was successful at. After the, stock, uh, after the actual stock market crash, the economy collapsed, I learned about stock market. Um, it didn't match with my personality just because the stock market is really up and down, not something that you can control. I didn't do well with that. Uh, and also that also led into me getting with two partners and then we were we had a failed attempt at flipping a property. We invested $5,000, it was like, today would be like hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, uh, and we ended up making a huge mistake because we bought a house on a place that technically was a ghetto. I mean, literally in the corner, there was a, a drug point and uh, nobody bought that house. We flipped it, we made the house look beautiful, nobody bought it, we had to lose it. So it was another failure and then we went back to my same routine of wasting time. So at that moment in 2012, I think that's when I said, okay, uh, that's it. No more waste of time. And it all starts with that viewpoint and entrepreneurship, uh, Nathan, as you probably know, uh, unless you don't change your mindset, your whatever viewpoints you have ingrained that are not helping you succeed in life, unless you don't change those, nothing else happens. So that's the first and foremost thing that you have to be like, okay, good. So I control my own destiny. That's a reality. If I wanna do well in life, it's because I'm going to go and create a better life. It's not going to be made better by somebody else. Uh, having Donald Trump become the president will not make my life better directly, all right? It might not. If you're a Donald Trump believer, maybe you understand that in the future, economy might improve, but your economical, your own financial life, your own family, your own business, everything about you doesn't depend on economical factors directly. You are going to create that. So the moment that you realize that, hey, it's not the economy, it's not the, the president, it's not the, the government, it's not uh, my neighbor, it's not any of these people around, that's the moment that things can start switching because now you hold the reins to your future. So for me, that was the moment, Nathan, and I started learning. The next day, I just, I just went into a systematic path of learning something new. Every single day I looked at uh, what can I learn today? Uh, what can I learn today that is going to help me get a little bit closer? So I started observing. And whenever I went around to a restaurant, to uh, a party, to the neighbor's house, to anywhere, I was looking at what was happening and I saw people that were actively using their cell phones, that people were consuming content in different fashions, that Facebook was becoming a big deal. And, and that's how basically it all started for me. And then somebody talked to me about, this was already uh, at some point in 2014, early 2014, I already had learned quite a bit about Facebook. 
Um, and somebody talked to me about the Amazon opportunity. And I said, wait a second. So Amazon is not the one selling products. So you can sell your own stuff. So that was a big wake up call. And I said, all right. So how about if I figure out how to use the power of unlimited traffic? Today, it's 2.38 billion people using the family of apps of Facebook to manipulate my Amazon brands. And I started using that for my Amazon brand and it was a big deal. My launching strategies, it's funny because today that has become the most valuable launching strategy was using social media. But my launching strategies back since 2014 were using Facebook advertising at that point, not even Instagram. Instagram was not even a, a, a marketing platform yet at that point. But I got obsessed about it and that led into um, every single day, I just figure out how to learn something new. I mean, one, one day after the other, what can I learn today? Oh, so the Facebook business manager. Oh, so uh, I can create an ad right here. Oh, so I just press a couple of buttons. Oh, the boost button doesn't really do its job as good as you would do it. So I started every single day getting better at that world and understanding the opportunities and also understanding that they change every single week, every single year, and you got to stay in up to date. And having a certificate on the wall is never going to be enough for you to be able to succeed in this world that we have in front of us today. So you, you have three kids, you have a responsibility, you've learned, you've had this knowledge now, and you want to become an entrepreneur. And I think that that first year is where a lot of entrepreneurs struggle. There's constant problems, there's things you haven't started of. So thought of um, being an entrepreneur is a whole new ballgame. Can you talk about that first year of being out on your own, starting your own business and, and the ups and downs that you had? It's funny because uh, at the beginning, uh, the, the whole mindset of entrepreneurship really does change uh, along the way. At the beginning of my entrepreneurship career, uh, all I cared about was being able to have a better quality of life, have a little bit of freedom, be able to enjoy something that I want to do in life, not have to do the things that I don't want to do. Stop working in places that I want to work at, work in places that I want to work at. My first year was all about that, just how can I make a little bit of money? I didn't think about what I have today. I wouldn't have even dreamed about in my wildest dreams, having a company of 57 people, uh, having all these things going on, having uh, freelancers, uh, virtual assistants, and all these people that are helping me with my enormous amount of projects. At that point, when I started in that first year, I didn't think about any of that stuff. I was not born an entrepreneur. I was not um, somehow gifted in the world of entrepreneurship. I became an entrepreneur by every single day learning something new. So at the beginning of my, my process, Nathan, it was all about a combination of learning and implementing. So I found a couple of people that I trusted, that I wanted to learn from. Uh, some of you uh, might know, you know Nathan really well, Ben Cummings. Uh, he was one of my first mentors in 2014 on the Amazon world. And I learned every single day about the Amazon world. And I grabbed that information and I created listings and I optimized and I did ranking. And then on the Facebook side of things, Nathan, it, it was so new that uh, imagine still today, 2019, people don't even understand that you can advertise on it. I mean, we take it for granted, but a lot of people don't even understand how it all works. One thing that I noticed because I do a lot of seminars is that still today, people that are retail owners, retail businesses, brick and mortars, services, they have this weird idea that Facebook is meant for e-commerce only. That's all. Instagram is, oh yeah, I wish I could advertise on Facebook, but you know, I have a brick and mortar service and uh, a business and I gotta do flyers and I gotta do postcards. It's incredible. So today still, even though this platform has evolved so much and it's a monster now, people still don't understand it. Imagine in 2014. So in 2014, the more that I look for information about how it all worked, the less I can find anything. So I learned some of the basic things on Facebook just by trial and error. I tested things out. At that point, the Facebook business manager, which a lot of you guys have set up, didn't even exist. 
um, it, would, it was launched late 2014, actually, uh, when it became a public thing. People didn't even knew what it was. Still today, most people don't even have it set up correctly or none of that stuff. But in 2014, I had to do advertising for my own ad account, my personal account. It was all very weird, but it was at the same time really mind-boggling, that the fact that I can actually press a couple of buttons and I'm like, oh my God. And then look at it an hour later and I would say, it's already running. It has 7,000 impressions. And there was no middleman needed. There was no other complications. I created my own ad. I created my own images and, um, and off you went. Now you can reach the world just like that. So it became something that little by little I figure out. Today we're in a different spot. Today there's education, there's Google, there's a lot of information, there's a lot of freelancers, as you know, uh, Nathan, that are good in this world already. They can help you build your campaigns for you. And along the way, you are able to get more results because you have help and you have information that I didn't have when I started building my Facebook uh, social media accounts back in 2014. Yeah, I completely agree. And this kind of transitions nicely. Let's talk about hiring. I'm assuming you didn't scale these businesses by yourself. Most entrepreneurs don't. Who was your first hire and how did that go? It's um, for me, 2014, right? So I built the Amazon business and I started doing really well. Uh, early 2015, around May, uh, we were doing about $300,000 in sales at that point. Incredible. I was like, oh my God, I, I just, $300,000 in sales. It's already a $4 million company. Are you kidding me? What is this? What is happening? At that point, it was just me and two partners. That was all. We were making some serious money at this point. Granted, we, were, we had a, um, a bed sheets uh, business, a brand that was very low profit margin, but still it was a lot of money. And um, I knew that at, at some point, I was trying to transition into being a full-time entrepreneur and just quit my job uh, because I didn't need it anymore. That's for sure. And I knew that I was actually overwhelmed. I knew that, hey, if I, if I actually want to grow my business, I need to get some help. And, and at that point, particularly at that point, I knew that I was stuck and I reached out to some people. This is before I knew you. I hired a, a, a company uh, that helped me find this individual person that uh, I did a resume and uh, I, got, uh, I got a resume resume from this person. Uh, his name is Jay. The crazy thing is that he's still with me today. Uh, out of all the uh, people that have worked with me for all the last five years, I have gotten people in and you know how it is. I mean, not everybody fits into your business. Not everybody's going to be efficient. We are all human beings. We're all different. Some people are going to have a good wavelength, a good match with you. Some people will not match. So you're going to have to get rid of people. But along the way, you find these people that are rock stars, super, super rock stars that are, that are able to help your business boom because uh, they are good at what they do. And not only that, you help them get better along the way. And there's people that are very, very talented out there. So I brought this person in. And uh, for me, that was my greatest moment ever. I remember that day as if it was yesterday. Today, he's one of my executives um, that I consider him an executive, even though he's a freelancer. Technically, he's I, he feels like he's part of the company, you know, and uh, he's doing projects, he's managing the team, he's doing activities. And uh, I've been able to build a team just like that slowly, one by one, uh, hire five, get rid of four of them because they didn't do good with our company, hire another five and just keep on going like that and just get people to help me with the different projects. And one thing that I'd like to do is that once I find a good freelancer, Nathan, I like to figure out how to keep them, you know, meaning that keep on hiring them, you know, over and over and over again for different projects and just build my circle around these guys that I know that I can rely on that my job that I'm giving them helps them have a better quality of life. And now I'm building this rock star team around me that I know is going to help my business go to the next level. It's something that our um, ancestors never had an opportunity to have. You know, we have the world at our reach. Uh, how many countries do you guys have, Nathan, on FreeUp? So we're about 40% US, 40% Philippines, and that last 20% is really scattered. So it's probably over 50 countries in that 20%. Right. That's fantastic. Because, uh, you know, when you think about it, like the, the Philippines people, these guys, man, I love them to death. They are honest, hardworking. Uh, uh, something that I can tell you guys, anybody that's looking to hire people from, from the Philippines, when they tell you that they lost their power, 
they lost their power, all right? It's not an excuse of my cat ate uh, the homework type of thing, right? So um, they, these guys are amazing. They're honest. And the, the, thing, the thing that's happening right now with these people is that they are being, uh, what's happening is that they're being bred since a young age to help the U.S., because uh, that they know that's where they can make a lot, more, a lot more money. So they have really good English. They have really good skills. They become really good at Facebook, at social media, at Amazon accounts, at creating content, graphic designing, all that stuff. So these guys are actually built to be able to help companies like us. If you think about it, if you want to just focus on bringing people in-house, it's so expensive and it's so difficult for you to be able to scale that just because um, these guys are going to require a lot more money. So when you hire like this as freelancers, it's so much easier to get your products, uh, your different projects assigned and be able to systematically grow your business. So your job as a creator, as a brand owner, as a business owner becomes making a list of all those things that you know somebody else can help you with. And that's where some people get actually lost, right? They have so many things. I don't know where to start. Well, you have to give direction. Uh, the freelancer is not going to come and tell you what to do. You have to basically hire a freelancer and tell them, hey, I want to create some content. And these are some examples of the content that I want. Go ahead and get it done. Come back to me with the results. And Along the way, you're gonna find some people that do an incredible job and some people that don't. It's all part of the process, right? And you have to just go through the experience. I think uh, Nathan does a good job of uh, finding out which are the guys that are the best talent out there, but you gotta find the ones that you are passionate about. And then for example, Facebook advertising. Uh, I have Facebook training. I teach people how to do Facebook marketing. Some of the guys, what they do, I, I actually um, have as students and as clients, people that are really, really busy. They're building businesses. They're actually creating organizations. They're managing staff. They're creating brands, products, et cetera. So they don't really have the time to sit down and consume a product or go through an entire training. I mean, my program is 190 lessons and 40 hours of content. It's so difficult to ask somebody to sit down and watch the whole thing. But when you actually can hire somebody as a freelancer, hey, so these lessons are going to help you understand how to run Facebook advertising. I want you to do these lessons and get some ads set up for me. Here you go. Go, get it going. And then you can just have a team like that, Facebook advertising, uh, YouTube experts, Amazon optimizers, PPC experts, all that stuff. So that's the power of building a team. And I think that that is the number one factor. I always talk about there's basically two main reasons why a company doesn't expand. Two main reasons. One of them is your recruiting process, right? Your staff, the people that are, you're getting them to help you, your freelancers, your projects, your ability to delegate projects, number one. And number two, which is not less important, is your ability to market. If you don't know how to do marketing, you're not going to make it. Combination of having the right people to help you and doing the right marketing, that's what makes a business boom overall. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think that's where a lot of people struggle is going from that sole entrepreneur where you can do everything, you can learn everything to, okay, now my primary responsibility is building a team or hiring freelancers or even working with agencies and getting the most out of them. And even the best freelancers in the world or the best agencies in the world aren't the best fit for every single client out there. So part of it's on you to know who do I work the best with, who's the right fit for me to put people in position to succeed. Let's transition a little bit. We're in 2019, marketing is changing, building a brand is changing. What do you see that's working right now that people should be aware of? I just did a video on this yesterday because uh, uh, I see that the number one reason uh, for failure in the social media game, uh, Nathan, is, uh, false expectations. Uh, I have, a, obviously I have an agency. I have a lot of people come into my world and ask me for help. And uh, they come in and they say, okay, Manuel, so I'm going to give you a dollar. <laughs> I, need you, I need you to give me $5 back next month. All right. If it was, if it were that easy, don't you think a lot more people would be doing it? It's not. Um, building a social media brand, uh, having a following, creating a big impact, it's a process and it's a long one. It's no different than, um, it's no different than any, any people from the past, right? Parents, grandparents building a business. It takes time. The one thing about it is that right now, 
It's faster to accomplish certain results just because we have the social media world, just because we have companies like FreeUp that have freelancers that can help you. Literally, I mean, you don't have to be stuck at anything. That's what I tell, like excuses are disappearing every single day. Oh, you want to create content? Do you know that you can hire somebody for that? Oh, you want to create uh, articles? Oh, guess what? You can hire a copywriter. Oh, you want to do Facebook advertising? Oh, guess what? You can actually also hire that. And some of those guys are so affordable that it's actually so incredibly easy to get any action. So what you have to be to be an entrepreneurship, to be an entrepreneur successful today, it's have a leadership and have a okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I want to create a social media brand. I want to have an Instagram following. I want to do social media advertising. I want to build a powerful Shopify channel and an Amazon brand. And I want to do this, right? These are, this is what I want to do. Okay. So what are the steps to be able to accomplish each one? All right. So I got to get this training and that training. Okay, good. So I'm going to delegate that and get a freelancer. Oh, what, I, what do I got to do to create an Amazon account? Okay, good. So I got to get an Amazon expert. So let me go ahead and delegate and find that. It's, it's actually not complicated once you realize the whole flow and the whole process. But what I'm seeing right now, Nathan, above everything else, is that the most important thing to win in the social media game is understanding that it's a long haul, number one, and going for customer acquisition. Do not go for um, ROI. Do not go for return on ad spend. That is a sure recipe for disaster. You go for generating more potential customers in your bucket. It's basically like my analogy on this, uh, on, on this particular point, uh, Nathan, it's very simple. Uh, if you're a fisherman and uh, your goal for that particular day is to catch as many possible, humanly possible fish when you go out for the day, that's what you want to do. That is your goal. So if you have a map and you get presented with, with uh, five different lakes and each lake has a different uh, proportion of the water in it, uh, the amount of water, the, 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 the exact dimensions of the lake in comparison with how many fish it has inside. Some of them are going to have more fish. Some of them are going to have less fish, some of them, et cetera. So what are you going to do as a fisherman? You have to evaluate where, which one of these five lakes, I can only pick one. Which of these five lakes can I get the most fish? Which one presents to me the greatest opportunity out there? So it's very simple. In the social media game, outside of the Amazon world, social media, meaning Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, in that particular game, it's all about lead generation. Even if you have to lose money. And what happens in the back end after you generate those leads? Strategies to generate messenger subscribers. Strategies to generate email list. When you do that, then you have to go really heavy at your back end. What is the back end? Um, email marketing, messenger marketing, retargeting. Those three areas, if you focus on those three areas, then you become that fisherman that shows the lake with the bigger potential of catching fish, and now you have just a lot of fish that you can catch. That's basically how it works. So it's all about customer lead generation, acquisition, so you can actually do your good job of getting these people into your sales funnel afterwards. Because in the social media game, Nathan, uh, people don't trust you, direct response, if they haven't seen you before. Generally, they don't. So what we're doing here is that we're trying to build relationships with people. Uh, what you do is that you actually grab your Facebook advertising and your Instagram advertising. And instead of trying to sell your stuff, don't do that. Give them something of value, meaning that you can grab a freebie, a PDF, a document, a tutorial, a mini course. I mean, I, I do this for some social media superstars. I work for Dr. Eric Berg. Um, 3 million subscribers on YouTube, um, 800,000 uh, messenger subscribers, uh, half a million people on Facebook. What we do is that we're always generating messenger subscribers and email subscribers through our strategies by offering them something of value. That something of value can be a, a PDF, a tutorial, a do-it-yourself. It could be a mini course. It could be something that from your intellectual property, if you give it to them, 
it can make them better somehow. And then you do your ninja strategies that are going to help you find your audience so you can find that audience and scale it. And then you work on building your pond of fish so it can actually overflow with customers, potential customers that you can sell to because once they are in your funnel, you can sell them over and over and over again. And now you get them to convert. One thing that we are observing is that when people come into the messenger channel for Dr. Berg Nathan, uh, we're also doing it for Grant Cardone right now. If you go to Grant Cardone's messenger channel, it's all about education. Uh, M.me forward slash Grant Cardone fan. Uh, what do we do? We deliver mini courses. We deliver eBooks that are free. We deliver content education. And then once in a while, we're going to sell you stuff because we're building a community of people that are educated. And by doing that, guess what? They trust us. And since they trust us, whatever we offer them, we take precedence over somebody else in social media that is going for a direct sell without offering value first. So the social media strategy is a long game of offering value first. If you do that, you win. If you don't, you're gonna be in the long list of people that have failed in the social media world. Manuel, I love it. This has been helpful. I learned a lot. Where can people find out more about you and what are you most excited about in 2019? 2019, uh, I would tell people to obsess about building communities, um, building messenger channels. Uh, right now, there's a, there's a big push from Facebook uh, to make messenger channel. I don't know if uh, you guys saw this, uh, the annual Facebook conference uh, yep. called the F8. Uh, there's a big, big concentration on making messenger a powerful social media channel by itself. And it's going to be something that we businesses are going to be able to take advantage of. 90% open rates, 20% click for rates. Think about messenger the same way that you think about email except that Messenger has been ingesting steroids and now it's email marketing on steroids. And that's what Messenger is today. It's a great channel to be, to be able to build communication, engagement, uh, communities that are people interested in what you have to say. So that will be a big concentration. Instagram advertising, opportunity with Instagram, opportunity with Instagram TV. It's a big deal. Instagram TV is coming out heavy now. Facebook is investing a lot of money on Instagram TV and the organic reach beats any organic reach on any social media platform out there right now today. If you do Instagram TV, you're going to get a lot more attention. And that's one of the biggest opportunities because Facebook wants to steal some more of the attention from the YouTube platform. And that's part of the game. So I will tell you to concentrate on Instagram TV, Instagram, stories on Facebook and Instagram, Facebook and a lot of content, build communities and bring people into your messenger channel, nurture them. And that's how you build a real brand. That should be the obsession in 2019 and going forward, probably for the next couple of years. If people want to find out about how my, my content and what I talk about, uh, you guys can actually do, uh, I actually did a quiz that we just launched yesterday, Nathan. It's going to be some of the basics on uh, the social media world, basics of the strategy. It's a super ninja awesome quiz uh, that um, people are going to love going for it. So if you guys want to go to manuelsuarez.com, that's M-A-N-U-E-L-S-U-A-R-E-Z.com forward slash quiz. That's going to take you to a messenger quiz that I'm going to get you for a series of questions and answers that you're going to be able to, if you get the wrong answer, you're going to get the right answer. And it's going to help you get some basics. And I have some mini course trainings in that messenger channel. And also I have a podcast uh, that if people want to follow called the Facebook Marketing Ninja Podcast, you can find it on Stitcher, on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts, and everywhere where there's a major podcast platform. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us. Awesome, man. Thanks for having me. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. Did you enjoy this content? If so, click like, leave us a comment, and subscribe to our channel so we can continue bringing you great content all about hiring.